Welcome to this video on inclusive student engagement, challenges and barriers. With this video, we would like to give you some insights into the results of a survey that we have conducted in the Inclusive Initiative. Us, that is Marina Brunner and Laura Eickbrecht from DHBW Duale Hochschule Baden-Württemberg in Karlsruhe. In this video, we will shortly introduce you to the team and the initiative, the research focus and methodology, and of course, the research findings. The inclusive project stands for inclusive engagement of non-traditional students in professional higher education and is a European project with different partners involved, which you can see on this slide. The inclusive project intends to contribute to a more inclusive student environment at professional higher education institutions. And in order to find out what this inclusive student environment should look like and what barriers are, we have started a survey. The next education research group at DHBW Karlsruhe deals with the digital transformation of learning and education institutions and the future of education and higher education. This is why it is also important for us to work on the inclusiveness of higher education institutions. And we coordinated the research on this survey. Before we present the results of our survey, we would like to introduce you to the research focus of this survey and the methodology that we applied for this. So let's have a look at the term student engagement. What does it actually mean? Student engagement is when higher education institutions and students collaborate in order to shape different domains such as governance and management, teaching and learning, quality assurance and student representation. Student organizations then basically mean students who come together in groups outside their curriculum for different purposes as presented here. And this can happen on very different levels, for example, on a student or course level, but also on an institutional level or even regional, national and international, such as the European Students' Union. When discussing non-traditional students, we quickly realized that we should have a look at concepts of diversity. And we found this diversity wheel to identify different dimensions of diversity. For example, a person's personality, then an internal dimension of diversity, such as age or social background or ethnicity, then an external dimension, with, uh, for example, the geographic location of a person, the competences acquired or personal habits, and then the organizational dimension, which locates a person in an institution or an organization. All these aspects, they can differ from person to person and thus represent aspects and dimensions of diversity. So what then is a non-traditional student actually? The term can be used to describe three different groups of students. For example, students that are underrepresented, disadvantaged students and vulnerable students. You already see maybe that this is complicated actually, because just because somebody is in an underrepresented group doesn't automatically mean that he or she is also disadvantaged or vulnerable. This is why we opted for kind of an open definition of non-traditional students within our initiative. Here, every student who does not feel like an integral part of the student and institutional community and or who, due to their specific circumstances, does not have the opportunity to get involved in student engagement during their studies, is a non-traditional student. So as you can see here, we don't say that this and this and this dimension of diversity makes you a non-traditional student. It's a more volatile and also flexible definition that we use for our purposes. So now that we have identified what non-traditional students are, we asked ourselves the question, what challenges and needs do non-traditional students have with regard to their involvement in student organizations? And what are the potentials to support the inclusion of non-traditional students? And these questions we try to answer in our survey. So let's have a look at the research methodology that we employed in order to answer these questions. It's based on six qualitative expert surveys and four focus groups conducted by the professional higher education institutions within the project. 
Afterwards, we had a qualitative content analysis for different characteristics of non-traditional students and mostly about the barriers for non-traditional students with a focus on student engagement that we grouped into overarching problem areas. So let's have a look at the results. In the following, we will give a brief overview of what we found out in our survey. On this slide, you find some characteristics of non-traditional students at professional higher education institutions as described within the focus groups and the expert surveys. Short note, again, a non-traditional student in our definition is somebody who does not feel like an integral part of the student community. Aspects from the internal dimension that were named were, for example, disabilities, migration background, more mature students, gender imbalance within programs of study, gender identity expression and sexual orientation. For the external dimension, we heard and amalgamated aspects as the socioeconomic background of the parental home, caretaking responsibilities, international background of students, working students, an alternative education path and re-entering students. All these are aspects that might make students feel non-traditional. So what makes a student engaged or not get engaged? What are challenges and barriers for non-traditional students in relation to student engagement? In our survey, we identified that there are at least five main problems to that. Time, visibility, identification, image, and accessibility. Related to time, it might be hard for students to find time to get engaged because the workload is too high or they need to work in order to finance their studies or the engagement might seem too long term. Student engagement might also have a visibility problem, so the results of it and why one should get engaged might not be very clear and also the participation opportunities. For the identification, it might be that the engagement opportunities do not relate to one's own challenges or that students are represented in a stereotyped way, for example. There might be an image problem, for example, if a student organization is related to a heavy drinking culture. And there might be accessibility problems with language, mobility, etc. So this is a lot of different challenges and barriers, but good news is that we also found some opportunities and further ideas in order to make student engagement more inclusive. For example, it's a good idea to offer different participation opportunities to different student contexts and needs with more or less time, for example, to make the diversity and also the need for diversity more visible to establish a support system for students and also contact points between student organizations and non-traditional students in order to harmonize each other's needs. There should be some networking between different levels of student organization and also teachers should be informed and professionalized for different student needs. We also need guidelines and policies for and from non-traditional students and another idea is to pay students for their student engagement or to include student engagement in the curricula to make it more accessible for all students. In case you are curious about the results of our survey, you can download the report on it for free with this QR code and this link. These are the references that we used for this presentation and we would like to thank you for your attention in watching this video on inclusive student engagement.